Weak Chinese trade data raises hopes Beijing will do more to support the economy. Financial markets take the slowdown in exports and a big downside surprise for imports in their stride. The prospect of monetary policy relaxation offsetting worries about growth. Let's get straight out to Reuters' Tara Joseph in Hong Kong. Axel, those numbers send a worrying signal about the outlook for China's economy. Many around this region now saying get ready for a rough first quarter. The export drop shows the knock-on pain of slowdown in Europe and the United States. And while exporters form a less crucial slice of the economy than they used to, they're still mainstay employers across China. The big downside for imports also catching investors by surprise. They show all important domestic demand is slowing at a time when officials are depending on consumption to keep the economy pumping. These trade numbers are a first in a spray of China data that will get over the next few weeks, including GDP. Growth data could come in at two and a half year lows, just recovering, but not quite yet. Back to you, Axel. All right, many thanks, Tara. Other headlines on Reuters this morning. Banks step up uh, Asia cost cutting. Sources say Bank of America Merrill Lynch will axe around a fifth of its MDs across its once booming Asia investment banking division. More tensions with Iran hopes for diplomatic solutions undermined as Iran begins enriching uranium in a mountain bunker and sentences an American to death for spying. Meanwhile, Iranian President Mahmoud Ahmadinejad gets pally with Venezuela's Hugo Chavez. The two men have lavished each other with praise, mocked U.S. disapproval and joked about having an atomic bomb at their disposal. Here in Europe, concerns about sovereign funding ahead of key auctions, keeping investors cautious about taking riskier positions. Banks in the spotlight again after Reuters obtains an internal memo showing Sogen is forecasting what it calls a significant drop in 2012 investment bank revenue. Kevin Lyon-Smith is Managing Director and Global Head of Equity Research at Credit Suisse and joins me on the line now uh, from Zurich. Um, this memo from Sogen, I, I guess, Kevin, this is just indicative of what we expect to see from the banks across the board this year. Exactly. What we've seen is um, continuing banks looking to meet the various criteria and regulatory requirements have been basically trimming businesses and pulling out of areas which require high funding requirements. So, so uh, who, what, who else are we going to see these types of memos from, do you think? Well, I think we've seen it across the board. All businesses, all banks have been looking very closely at businesses, looking at profitability and um, funding requirements. I think you'll see it, 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 virtually every bank um, on the street. Uh, on sovereign funding, given what we've had, given what we've got coming up, how, how, how much more cautious are you on taking riskier positions in the equity markets now? Well, certainly we've trimmed, pulled back. I mean, since um, mid last year, we've been edging back in our um, overweight positions um, on cyclicals. Um, we've pulled back for this year. We're certainly a lot more defensively positioned. In the short term, one to six month view, we're neutrally positioned on equities. All right, Kevin, many thanks. British retailers ended 2011 on a high note. The latest data from the British Retail Consortium shows hefty discounting lured in shoppers and gave businesses their best sales growth in months. Spellweather Marks & Spencer's posted a small rise in Christmas sales but says it expects trading conditions to remain challenging. Department store Debenhams also faring slightly better than expected. Uh, Reuters Counterparties highlights a stat picked up by the Reform Broker blog that about 60% of hedge funds covered by hedge fund intelligence lost money in 2011. Not impressive, the blog notes, given that standing tall amid volatility is exactly how they sell themselves to investors. On Twitter, among the uh, top stories trending from Reuters.com, strong, some would say uh, inflammatory words from Pope Benedict that gay marriage is one of several threats to the traditional family that undermine the future of humanity itself. That is it for now. Here's our pick of the day. A familiar face to soccer fans on both sides of the Atlantic. Arsenal's Thierry Henry celebrates at the final whistle after his goal against Leeds in the FA Cup in London last night. Henry is on a two-month loan, of course, from the New York Red Bulls. I'm Axel Threlfall. This is Reuters.